So let's have a look at how matrix operations behave with respect to the transpose operation. So we've got a theorem here with four parts. The first one says that if you transpose a matrix and then transpose it again, you get back to where you started from, which should be no big surprise because transposition is basically a reflection. And if you do the same reflection twice, you get back to the original thing. Um, the second part says that the transpose of a sum is equal to the sum of the transposed matrices. The third one says that if you transpose a scalar multiple, then it's the same as the scalar multiple times the transposed matrix. And the last one says that the transpose of a matrix product is equal to the product of the transposed matrices, but now in the reversed order. So that one's a little bit maybe counterintuitive, but let's take a look at these. So um, I'm not going to really discuss the, the first one or the third one, because I think those are pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one for the reasons I mentioned before, and the third one because, well, if you flip a matrix and multiply everything by two, or if you multiply everything by two and then flip, eh, you're doing the same thing to every entry, you're going to end up with the same thing either way. Let's take a look at um, uh, part two and part four. And so we're going to be using the idea that the ijth entry of the transpose of a matrix is going to be the jith entry of the matrix itself. Okay, so let's look at A transpose plus B transpose. If I consider the ijth entry of this, then by the definition of uh, matrix addition, this is the ijth entry of that one plus the ijth entry of the other one. Now by the definition of transpose that I wrote just on the a line just above, this first one is the same thing as the jith entry of A, and this second one is the same thing as the jith entry of B. And putting these back together again, we see that this is the same thing as the jith entry of A plus B. And then by the definition of transpose in the line above, once again, this is the same thing as the ijth entry of the transpose of the thing in the brackets. And so now reading from on the, the leftmost to the rightmost, what we've seen is that um, AT plus BT and A plus B transpose have the same entries. So they must be equal. Okay, what about um, part four? So for part four of the theorem, let's take a look at um, the transpose of the product, and we'll take a look at its ijth entry. So the ijth entry of this guy is going to be, well, let's see. So that's going to be the... Um, jith entry of a times b. And so that's going to be then by our definition of matrix multiplication, this is going to be the summation, k goes from 1 through n. And then let's see, so um, we, we use the, uh, the first one here, that's going to be the subscript on the first factor that gets fixed. So a sub j, um, and then we're going to let k run through the indices, and then we'll have b times k, and then the entry that we want from the b is the ith one, so we'll put the i there. Meanwhile, if we look at b transpose times a transpose, and we take the ijth entry of that, then that's going to be, let's see, um, well, we're going to need to look at the 
ikth entry of B transpose summed against the kjth entry of A transpose. as k goes from 1 to n. So this is the sum k goes from 1 to n of, let's see, so uh, we've got b, k, i, a, j, k. And now since we're looking at a product just of numbers right here, we can write them in whatever order we like. And so this is k1 to n, a, j, k, b, k, i, and that is exactly the same as what we got the other way. So, a, b transpose, and b transpose, a transpose, have the same entries. So they are equal. And we are done.